Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Moiz Ali and I'm going to talk about predicting customer churn with machine learning. All right. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a data scientist currently working in a fintech space in Toronto uh, at the junction of finance, economics and machine learning. Uh, me and my team are working on uh, inventing some novel uh, time series application to predict the recovery uh, or I would say predict the economic recovery after COVID uh, by, by, by certain industries. Um, uh, I'm a very active open source contributor uh, and um, in the last two years I've been working to develop a library called PyCaret uh, which is an open source uh, machine learning library in Python. Uh, I'm going to use that uh, in my demonstration today. So what is PyCaret? It's an open source low code machine learning library and it's an end-to-end uh, model management tool in Python. Uh, it's commonly used for prototyping and deployment of end-to-end uh, -end machine learning pipeline. Uh, it's, a, it's a very user-friendly tool uh, targeted uh, for, for business audience uh, and uh, perhaps people with, uh, uh, with not so heavy computer science background. Um, some statistics. Um, uh, we have released our first public version in April of 2020 and we have 500,000 plus downloads so far. Uh, we have th more than 3,000 kids stars, uh, 1,700 plus comments in last one year. And the number that I'm most proud of is uh, 46 contributors uh, from community who are uh, actively working to build PyCare. All right, so what is customer churn? Customer churn, think it as a percentage of customers uh, that that you will lose to your competitors or they will go out of business or whatever, right? So if you had thousand customers at the start of the period uh, and at the end of the period you have uh, 950 customers, so you have a churn of 5%, 50 divided by 1000. Um, how is customer churn uh, is, is predicted using machine learning or what's the application here, right? So what do you see is, is a very, very, a visual way to understand what's going on here. So as a company, you would have uh, your customer history uh, database uh, where you would have your customer dimensions, the location, uh, the business unit, uh, pricing plan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, using that, uh, you would train a machine learning model, which is this blue box in center. Uh, and every month you are gonna take your existing customer base and pass it to this machine learning model and what it would do is it would separate out the happy customers which are less likely to churn uh, versus uh, customers that are at the highest risk of churning. Uh, and uh, what you want to do is once you predict those customers, so imagine at every month end you would be uh, creating a feature or data set that you would pass to machine learning model. It would tell you, tell you that who are your highest highest risky customers um, uh, with respect to churn. And then you would transfer that list to customer retention department to do some kind of intervention to stop the churn, right? So that's the business value of project. Well, something to be careful about in machine learning or churn related projects is you have uh, two things. You have event and you have performance window. Event is basically uh, the time period uh, using which you are training your model. So, uh, because it, it, when you're predicting churn, you want to take care of that time lag, right? Because you at least have to predict one month in advance, two or three or four months in advance, depending on business use case. But the point here is you have to predict it in advance. So there has to be a lagging time period, right? Because you want to predict in advance so that company or customer retention team has time to intervene and stop the churn, right? That's the whole idea. And, and the, the last date of your event period is your cutoff date. So. If today is 31st May and you want to predict whether the customer or your existing customer list, who, who is at the risk of churning by end of June, uh, then your performance window is June, right? If you're only talking about one month lag. So this is something you have to be take, uh, take care of. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it's, very, it's very easy to kind of pass the leakage in the machine learning model so that, I mean, it, you, you would think that it's a good model, but uh, when it would start performing on, on real life data, unseen data, uh, it wouldn't be as good as uh, you would have perceived. All right, this is a high level uh, workflow that we are gonna follow today. 
uh, we will use it uh, but it's it's a very generic uh, life cycle it can be applied to any supervised machine learning problem uh, anything any any problem it starts with business problem the first box on the left hand side then you have data sourcing and etl where you collect the data then you do exploratory data analysis you examine your data uh, you draw hypothesis from your data by visually looking at it uh, then you have data preparation for machine learning which involves a couple of steps 20 25 30 steps and then you have model training and selection where you actually take the pre-trained algorithms and fit them on data uh, multiple of them and then you tune their hyperparameter parameters and the, you do a bunch of things basically to come up with one final algorithm uh, that's that's doing the best and then you deploy that model uh, PyCaret uh, fits in here in these two right boxes so using PyCaret uh, you can do this iteration uh, very quickly, all right? Okay, so here's the data set I'm using uh, for for uh, for this demo today. Um, it's it's a telecom customer churn data set from Kaggle. Uh, the link is down here in presentation. Um, and uh, uh, this, basically, each row is a customer, and you can see uh, various attributes of customer. And the last column here. Uh, represents uh, whether that customer has left next month or next next month or whatever. I don't know the time period here, but it basically says yes or no, right? The next phase is exploratory data analysis. Uh, and as, as you can guess, uh, with any churn related uh, problem, the most important thing here is your contract, right? Are you a month to month customer? Are you locked in for a year or two years? So what you see here on the screen is basically three facets. The first graph on the left hand side is month to month, then one year, then two year. On your x-axis, you have customer tenure, how long have been the customer with the company in, in number of months. Uh, your y-axis is total charges, that's your total bill per month. Uh, and the red and blue dots are basically represented by churn or no, right? So yes or no, uh, red color or orange color is yes. And you can see in a month to month contract, uh, the most of the churn is here. Uh, in the first graph, right? Kind of makes sense uh, because if you, your customer has like one year lock-in contract, you would have less churn there. All right. To prepare the data in PyCaret, um, you basically import the module. So this is the code you would write in Jupyter Notebook or uh, any of your ID or whatever you, you are using for Python. Uh, you would import the classification module, uh, pass the data. Uh, this is the data frame called data. Pass the target column. Uh, churn is the name of the target column. And then I'm ignoring customer ID features because I don't want to train models on customer ID. It's, it's a unique identifier, right? And you can see we have 7,000 uh, data points. Uh, it was divided into two sets, train and test, 5,000 and 2,000, right? Uh, this is how you actually evaluate uh, the performance of your machine learning models. The first thing you do after setup now, after setup, your data is actually ready for training. So you basically pass this command from PyCare at compare models. And it would train a bunch of models using cross-validation. Cross-validation is a way how you evaluate your models. And it would give you this list out here. So the way you would read this table is each row is an algorithm here. Uh, and each column is a metric here. And you can see AUC is one of the metric um, uh, for measuring the model performance. And you can see gradient boosting classifier is the best model in terms of AUC, right? Look at how easy just one word here, uh, no, just one line of code and, and there you go, you have your best model. You want, if you want, you can analyze the performance of models so with just one line of code, you can see the feature importance. Tenure is the most important feature for algorithm to predict the churn, uh, contract month to month, uh, online security, no, blah, 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 right? This is a UC plot, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the, number we were seeing on the other table, 85. Confusion matrix, uh, this shows you, this, 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 so basically four, four quadrants, uh, uh, the one here bottom uh, right is uh, true positive, uh, on the top here is true negative, this is 138 is false positive, and this is false negative. Uh, and if you attach dollar to this uh, by just making some business assumptions, so I'm assuming that every time you would predict uh, uh, you would have a true positive, you would be able to intervene and stop that churn, right? So 309 is your true positive. And every time you do that, you extend the customer lifetime value by $5,000. So you multiply by 5,000 by 309, you get 1.5 million. Uh, and the way you would intervene, you would offer some kind of uh, 
refund some kind of voucher, gift voucher or something like that, I, I assumed worth $1,000. Uh, so you'd pay 138 plus 309, 447 customers, you'd pay $1,000 and you net this number. You, you, the, so the business value of this model, over 2,000 customers, if you sum up all these, you would get 2,000 approximately, is, is $1.1 million roughly. And these are business assumptions, right? Uh, but but the problem here is uh, if you've seen like I've optimized a, a generic machine learning metric right AUC uh, now after the fact I calculated the dollar amount but I actually didn't feed it that intelligence to the model uh, what what you can do in PyCaret is actually write this two lines of code and pass that intelligence through add metric function and now if you notice this is the same table except that we have a new column here profit and if you notice this is now our best model based on profit which is naive based uh, and our best model based on AUC, which is gradient boosting classifier, is now number fifth, right? So now I'm making a right decision in terms of choosing a model that matters most to the business, right? This is the new confusion matrix. Uh, obviously, when you sum this, the numbers are still 2,000, uh, but the proportion between true positive, uh, false positive, uh, and false negative has changed. Uh, so this was before 1.1 million. And this is after. So using night base, uh, we are now making 1.5 million approximately, 1.45 million um, over, over 2,000 customers. All right. That's bring, that, that brings me to the end of, uh, end of my talk today. I'll be happy to take any questions.